Hey gang, welcome back to Inverted Pursuits Laboratory. Today we are taking a look at the Fire Drake kit. And so this is the kit, how it comes inside a little Ziploc baggie, a large Ziploc baggie. Uh, all the parts inside, it's got a nice little label on it. So inside the kit, when you open it up, what you will find is a 12 inch Apogee nylon parachute. Your mid body section. The fin can, nose cone, as well as the motor retention. Motor retention screws into the back of the rocket. Additionally, inside the kit, you will find a 60 inch Spectra shot cord, as well as a 24 millimeter, three and a quarter inch. BT50 body tube for lining your motor. You will also find a small bag of what's commonly known as dog barf to get you started on your first couple launches. So to begin the build, we want to take a look at every part, make sure it fits together and sands well. So the parts are all keyed as they fit together. There is only one way these go together, if I can find it. And so those fit together quite nicely. We also want to check our nose cone. Nose cone's a little tighter than I'd like it to be. So get some sandpaper. And clean up your parts a little bit. Take a little off the diameter make it fit better. Once you've got it fitting where you want to, you can take the nose cone off and set it off to the side. Next thing we want to check if it fits is our BT-52. So it goes in the back of the rocket and slides in quite nicely so you can say that's a good fit. Then we always want to check our threaded motor retention. Find the start of the threads. Make sure it fits on there. Everything fits inside as we want. And then we can take all of this back out for the time being, and then we'll get started on gluing our body sections together. So remember this is keyed and only goes together one way, but we are going to put glue around the base here on this section that sticks down. Because CA glue bonds really, really well to PETG. So then we will slide this all in there, give it a little once over, and then spritzer with the kicker, and that will instantly set all the way through the rocket body. And I'm not gonna test that too much because I don't wanna accidentally break it apart should that have not kicked all the way through. So we're gonna go ahead and continue to be careful. And if you're not using kicker, you can continue to work on your rocket, just be careful. Sometimes wrap a little bit of tape around this area, it will help keep the rocket together. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is your body, is your motor mount tube. And your motor mount tube fits in there really nicely. And because of your threaded motor retention, it's not required that you glue this motor tube in. So we can thread that in there and you can see that I can't pull the motor tube out. The motor tube is loose in there and will move back and forth in amount. That's to allow for motors that are 24 millimeters but not Estes motors to be able to fit in there because some 24 millimeter motors built by Aerotech and other companies have a little flange and so there's a seat, uh, seating surface in here that those can sit against and an equatable amount of space inside the motor retention to allow that to sit in there and then the length of the entire thing is such that the back edge of this to the forward retention for Estes motors is the exact length of an E motor. If you're wanting to fly it on a D motor uh, you'll need to use a uh, adapter and Estes has those available but they are not a part of this kit. So for my rocket I'm not going to be gluing that in there but for gluing it in 
it's as simple as pulling it out a couple inches, running glue along, and just kicking it back in there. And for using accelerator on this, you just spritz it down the tube and it will set it instantly. But then we're gonna go ahead and screw motor retention on the back. And the next thing we're going to be doing is messing with our shock cord. So the shock cord is 60 inches in length, which is quite long. It is five foot of shock cord to go with this. So we pull that out of our tape. And I recommend using a nut to assist you in getting the shock cord through the body tube. So there is actually a shock cord mount located about right here in the rocket body that you will need to thread this down through the rocket body out the bottom and back up the top, which actually I'm gonna go ahead and remove the motor retention and cardboard tube that I put in there because it will assist in getting this through more easily. And so I'm gonna use a nut and I'm just gonna tie the nut on here with a simple overhand knot. It does not need to be anything fancy. If you really, really wanna get fancy, you can double knot it on there real quick or tie some fancy knot that you wanna use, like a fishing knot for a plumb bob or just even using a plumb bob instead of a nut would work just as well in this situation. But once I get my knots tied, the thing I, first thing I'm gonna do is take the nut and fish it down the rocket body and it will just fall through one side of the mount and it comes all the way through. Now we're going to go back through the opposing side. Now on the inside of the rocket, it looks roughly like this. So we slid the part down and underneath one side of this lower mount and it came all the way out. Now we're gonna fish it back and we wanna make sure we end up on top of the other side of this mount. If we fish it back through the same side, the shock cord will just simply come out of the rocket. So looking back down your body tube and putting the side you're trying to fish down to assist to let gravity assist you makes this a very easy process. And a quick way to check that you got it right, just give it a little tug, it's not coming out. So to tie this on there, you want to use either just a simple slip knot or two half hitches uh, to tie your shot cord around there. So I use two half hitches because it is my preferred knot, but a slip knot tied will do just as well. And two half hitches. It goes off without a hitch. <laughs> Bad knot joke. And then you just pull tight and it's set down inside there. Now we've got the other end of our shock cord, which needs to get tied to our nose cone. And so I'm gonna put a little curve in it and just fish it on through, pull it out the other side. And now you can tie a similar slip knot here. I tend to tie a square knot or just a basic overhand. It just needs to be able to stay. So an overhand or double knotting it or a square knot anything that is guaranteed retention and when you pull on it it's not going to come back off your nose cone is all you need so now you've got all of this together the next thing you need to do is attach your parachute so you'll open your parachute up if i can actually get into this huh? man forgot how well sealed these were and your parachute comes out Of course, this is the one time I don't have scissors on me. And we want to make sure nothing is tangled. There should be three lines that you have coming out of the parachute, or coming off of the parachute. And none of them should be intertwined. And so I can get a hold of all three lines bring them together in one nice loop. I don't like that one, it's twisted. And now as you can see, I've got all the lines and there's nothing tangled around each other. So the 
way I recommend doing this is I actually will take my shot cord here and tie a very simple overhand knot within the center of my shot cord. I tie the knot so it looks about like this in the center of my shot cord for attaching the parachute. So that knot, once it's in there, a very sturdy place to mount your shot cord to. Again, make sure none of your parachute lines are tangled and then take the end thread them through this loop and then loop the parachute back again on itself. And now your parachute is connected to the rocket in a very simple and secure manner. And then fold the parachute to your particular preference or flavor of folding the parachute. If you want to cut the uh, top of the parachute off to make a spill hole, that's up to your prerogative. For the simplicity of this build, I'm just going to wrap it very improperly and locate the parachute and remaining shot cord inside the rocket. Now, if you're getting ready to head out to launch, you're gonna wanna take a little pinch of this dog barf and shove it down the body tube before you put the rest of the parachute or shot cord in there. And as a reminder, this stuff will help keep your rocket uh, shot cord or parachute from getting burnt or severed. Um, likewise, I also recommend taking a small amount and shoving it up the motor tube before you put your motor in, as that will also help keep things from getting burnt improperly. So that's what this is for. You've got enough here for a good handful of flights. So then our motor mount tube goes in the back. Uh, we can grab, oh, the motors I forgot, because, oh, not that one. So here we've got a pretty standard Aerotech plastic motor, and we can see how that fits in there. And then your motor retention is very simply used to hold the motor on there. And it's got a little bit of wiggle, but it's perfect otherwise. And then, all right, we wanna pull that one out after flight, and the cardboard may come out with it, but that's just fine. Then you've got an Estes motor you wanna fly on, the Estes E12, this is an E12-6. It fits snugly right in there. It doesn't go too far in as it hits its rear retention. And then you thread the motor cap in there and there is your motor perfectly retained inside there. So now all you need to do is add an igniter, get your launch pad out and head to the pad. So thanks for watching gang. I hope you enjoyed following along throughout the Fire Drake build and uh, if you're interested in buying the Fire Drake kit, there's a link in the description below. Thanks for watching, gang. A quick reminder before you head to the pad, please remember that the Fire Drake kit flies on a 3 16 launch rod. So your standard Estes 8 inch launch rod will work just fine, but I recommend flying it with the Estes Porta Pad 2E. I believe that was the name of it. Yes, Estes, oh, Estes Porta Pad E. It's for their larger rockets that fly on the E motors and it will assist in getting your rocket off the pad a lot better.